A co-host on one of my podcasts once said that British Racing Green was one of the best colors ever made. Even in pen form, I have to agree. Now, if you've listened to the Two Guys Zero Planners podcast, you may already know that I'm not a big fan of Lamy sections. That's kind of part of the reason that Lamy hasn't made more appearances on the channel. But as soon as I saw the color being used on this pen, I decided to suck it up and give this one a shot. We'll cover here in a bit if that was a good idea. Actually, let's cover that now. Going through the TLDW, this pen is almost all upside. The aluminum body is very well done and balanced nicely. The texturing on the section makes for a comfortable riding experience, despite not having a concave design. Though it is a different taper than normal nibs, if you are so inclined, you can easily swap this one out with a different nib size of your choice. The price point is actually extremely reasonable, and I find it to be just chunky enough to be comfortable without feeling like I'm riding with a tree trunk. The only thing about this pen that I wasn't, like, you know, an instant win for me was the play on the cap and that I accidentally ordered a fine nib instead of the medium. But all in all, this pen is a win. So let's take a look. What we have here is a fine specimen of outer sleeve design. This is no frills and I'm actually fine with that. Inside we have a trifold cardboard box with a raised Lamy logo and it's a nice look overall. Come to think of it, this is now my new favorite inner box. Anyways, opening up the box, where we would normally be greeted with a pen, we are greeted with the Lamy Care, Use, and General Information Guide. Underneath that is the limited warranty, which don't ask, because I didn't read it. And next to the pen is a cartridge of Lamy Blue Ink, which, if we're gonna be honest, will probably never get used. And that leaves us with the main event. This is the dark green Lamy Aeon. Now, I should probably mention that the pen also does come with a converter. It's already in the pen and filled with what I think is a good matching ink. More on that later. That aside, we have the aluminum body with a matching snap cap. This is what I was talking about with the cap having a little too much play to it. You can see that I'm able to easily rotate the body to my heart's content without the body catching on this cap. It does actually hold firm though, so there is that. It's also a little bit of a squeaker. So if you like that or you like fidgeting, it could be oddly addicting. Now, uncapping the pen, I like the contrast from the body to the gently tapered section. The design choice here was well thought out and it shows. And to be honest, the texture was done in such a way that it feels soft, which as soon as you grip the pen, yeah, it, it really does, at least to me. Also, let's take a look at this nib. The nib on the Aeon is slightly more streamlined than the other Lamy nibs that you're going to see on like the All-Star, things like that. What I mean here is that the Lamy standard nib really kind of has a boxy look. Either way though, it's a good complement to this body. Speaking of which, lengthwise, the Aeon comes in at 14.2 centimeters when capped and a hefty 33 grams at that. Uncapped, we're looking at slightly shorter with 13.6 centimeters and a sailor topping 22 grams. Also of note, this section is pretty long at 3.7 centimeters and the taper starts at 12 millimeters in the base part and nine millimeters at the flange. This I feel is a good counterpart to the standard concave section that we tend to see. Now let's take a look at how this writes. A little earlier, I mentioned that I found a good ink for this pen. That ink is the Pelican 4001 dark green. The hue is slightly different between the two, but they are close enough that I feel they make a good match for each other. It's probably going to be a permanent pairing if we're gonna be honest with each other. Now, second note, I apologize for the chicken scratch on this one. There are two pen brands where I find that I really can't write with a fine nib, Lamy and Kaveco. But if we look past the chicken scratch and look at the delivery, what we see is a feed and nib that work very well with the drier Pelican 4001 ink. I was a little worried that when I paired these two together, as I didn't know if it would be a combination of automatic hard starts, but this ink is coming out super smooth and it's not skipping or hard starting on the pen, paper, you know, all of the above. Also of note, unlike the Lamy 2000 that I used to own, my fingers aren't slipping down on the section. This is important. 
Part of the reason I put so much into pointing out the concave of a section is due to the rough experience of finger slide that I had on the L2K. So to have a pen where that isn't needed is a nice change of pace. I think part of that has to do with the weight and balance of this pen, by the way. As I'm writing, the pen is sitting comfortably in the crease of my hand and the nib isn't lifting from the page. This is allowing me to write without having the grip harder on the pen itself, which is also playing into my fingers not being forced into sliding down the pen body. So overall, I feel this pen makes up for the bad time I had with the L2K and the dislike for the all-star grips. But that's gonna do it for the Lamy Aeon in dark green. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, while you're down there, consider becoming a patron. My dogs enjoy the extra treats. So, till next time, don't drink the ink.